Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new GGD plugin, which is the Studio Cabs Zilla Edition. Now, what this plugin is, it's a collection of nine different Zilla cabinets, which are these amazing custom hand built cabs. Um, and they range everything from uh, 1 by 12 all the way up to oversized 4 by 12 cabs, with a range of speakers too that covers everything from vintage to modern tones. And we've captured each of them with seven microphones including a stereo room mic as well. But instead of going down the typical route that a lot of cabinet simulators of giving every perceivable option, especially if it's like a huge list of files, we wanted to simplify all of that. We just decided to focus on two key sweet spots for each microphone and each speaker. So there's one close mic position, which is right up on the grill of the cabinet, and another one which is back a little bit from the cab, and you can actually blend between them using a control within the plugin. Um, for those of you who haven't mic'd up guitar cabs before, when you're right up on the speaker, you get really direct sound with a lot of low end. But the further back you get, you get a little bit more clarity, a little bit more air, and less low end, which can be really useful for kind of layered guitars. Um, it can be really useful for clean tones, and especially if you're using a microphone that's got a ton of low end to it, like a ribbon mic or a large diaphragm condenser, both of which feature within the plugin. Now here to help me out today, I've got the wonderful Joe. Joe's not only one of my best friends, he's also a phenomenal guitar player, and he also works at Zilla Cab, so he's a pretty useful dude to have around. Uh, and we're gonna be getting him to do a bit of noodling, both through a real amp, through a load box, and also through an amp plugin, so that you guys can get an idea of how you can use the GGD Studio Cab Zilla Edition in either context. One thing worth pointing out is that we've developed a really unique and accurate way of capturing impulse responses. And the sound of these cabs within the plugin is absolutely identical to the real thing down to the microphone positions and also the playing feel which is a super important factor when you're a guitarist. Cool so with that out of the way let's get stuck into the sounds of some of these cabs and I think it'd be good to start with the 1x12s uh, kind of go from small to big so uh, the first one on the list would be the brilliantly named Fat Baby. Uh, uh, this is like quite a large cab given it's a 1x12 isn't it? Yeah it's um based around the, the popular 2x12 of Fat Boy, um, just a scaled down 112 version of that, but with the same depth and um, yeah, it gives you a lot of access to low end from a, from a small small cab. So. Yeah, I remember that being quite surprising when we were when we were creating these, like it's a 1x12, but especially with the speaker that we use, which is um, it's a G12H150, red back speaker. Um, these are quite high wattage and they produce a lot of low end, so it's actually a really full sounding cab you can use. So um, to kick things off, let's maybe start with uh, just your good old 57, and I'm also using the room mic over here blended in to get a bit more of a realistic feel. Um, we're going to be running through the amp, which is a Marshall JMP. Um, at the moment we're just going straight into the amp uh, with nothing apart from the Zilla cab between that and your ears. So let's check it out. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really cool cab. I'd say a lot of people, I think, overlook 1x12s for recording, but especially, you know, something like, like this, which is quite a large volume cab, you've still got plenty of beefiness there, and, and the, like, the voice of the cab is really pleasant, I think. Like, yeah. it's quite classic sounding. Let's move on from the Fat Baby, and let's move to the ported 1x12, which is the other 1x12 that we featured in this plugin. Uh, this time, we've got a G12H Cream back. Uh, maybe you can let us know a little bit about what what is this cab? What, what is a ported 1x12? And is there something significant about this speaker? Um, this, well, this cab is slightly smaller than the Fat Baby, but it's designed to at least keep up with it. And if not more, it's got um, two ports in the front of the baffle, which, again, act, uh, give you access to a lot more bottom end than you might necessarily think you could get from a cab from that size. Sure. And Paul uh, designed this cab around that speaker, the G12H Creamback, so sure. a perfect pairing. Wicked. Yeah, so and for those of you who don't know, Paul is the mastermind, the founder behind Zilla Cab. So, um, yeah, G12H Cream back. It's quite a high powered but classic sounding yeah. speaker, isn't that the case? Also, something which I should mention is that each of the cabs, when you select them, loads up with um, what we think is probably the, the primary choice of microphone that you might choose, so microphone position. Here it's loaded up with a 57 bit off axis. So, 
uh, for those of you who haven't ever done it, if you move a 57 or another microphone so that it's not pointing directly at the cabinet, it's kind of at an angle, um, you get a softer sound. It tends to sound a little bit darker, um, kind of notches away some of the harsh frequencies. So it can be really cool, especially with some of these more classic voiced speakers, which tend to have a, a bit more of a kind of glassy top mm -hmm. end. Sounds really nice uh, for cleaner stuff, but especially under gain, it can be nice to soften that a little bit. So let's see how that sounds. I've loaded it up, um, 57 off axis and the room mics again. <laughs> Sounds really cool. I like how that one works with the ribbon. I mean, it's almost like it's almost too much low end, yeah, um, for for a mix perhaps. But it's cool because that ribbon is really picking up every last hertz that's coming out of that cab, and that's going real deep there. So let's move on perhaps to the two by twelves. There's a lot of really cool tones to be had with each of these cabs, and something you can do is load up multiple of the same cab with different speaker options, different mic options. With the one by twelves, there's only the one speaker, but Everything from now on has two speakers. And instead of kind of focusing on using the microphone position to uh, gain the different tones, you can actually get really creative with combinations of either different microphones on the same cab, different speakers within the same cab, or totally different cabs to build up uh, a kind of unique sound that you wouldn't be able to get any other way. Let's dig in now to the Studio Pro 2x12. So this is actually your personal cab, isn't it? Yeah, this is my one. <laughs> it's got... The option of having an open back, hasn't it? That's and right. that's what we yeah. did for yeah. when we recorded that. Yeah. So for people that don't know what the effect of opening up the back of a cab is, is it, it really reduces the amount of kind of low end resonance that you get. So you lose quite a lot of the low end, but what you do gain is a kind of more open and airy sound. It's a bit closer to what you get with most combo amps, for example, yeah. which is obviously a really desirable sound too. Uh, this is the only cabinet in the bundle that we recorded with an open back, so it does kind of stand on its own in that way. And I think it's a really cool usable sound. Absolutely. Do you want to move it to humbuckers for this? Yeah. So what I've done here is I've actually loaded up the two different speakers. So we've got the option of either the G12M Creamback, which is similar to the speaker, which has been the ported 1x12, but it's a slightly lower powered version, isn't it? Um, and then we've also got the Almico Creamback, which is a, which is an awesome sounding speaker. Yeah. What's that one kind of aimed at? Um, that's always like a, a classy sounding speaker to me. It's, um, I like the sound of it for, for lead work mainly, but um, it's got like a nice vocal mid-range push to it, which I think... Yeah, it really works really well for lead stuff, so. Wicked. And something I should say is all of the cabs, all of the microphones, and all of the positions have all been phase matched, so you can blend to your heart's content. You're never going to run into any problems there, you know. It's really cool having all these things there, but completely blendable, because basically, however you want to do it, however loud you want to make the different microphones, you can pan them whichever way you want. You can adjust the microphone position with this close or far knob, and it's always going to combine yeah. in the best possible way. Something which is really cool about this plugin is that we've taken care of every technical aspect. All of the engineering has been done in such a way that all of the cabs, all of the speakers, all of the microphones, and whether you're dealing with the kind of close uh, or anywhere up to the far mic position, everything is phase coherent, which means that you can blend to your heart's content, create new sounds. You never need to worry about kind of having destructive phase cancellation, which, which is huge because if you were doing this in real life, that would be a massive concern. And since Joe's just mentioned that the Almaco Creamback sounds wicked for leads, I think it'd be really cool to put a little bit more gain onto the amp, so we're going to just boost it. Still no other effects apart from now, we've just got the boost pedal in front of the amp, still leaving the room mic in there too for a bit of extra ambience. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Sounds wicked. I mean, you can definitely tell it's not got as much low end as a, as a closed yeah. back cab does, but um, it's still a super valid sound. I feel like the actual room mic track, mm. you can really perceive the difference because I guess there's so much more leaving the back of the cab yeah, and going yeah. out into the room. So still a super cool cab. And I think that's definitely going to be a prime option for, for clean guitars too. So moving on from the uh, Studio Pro 2x12, I think it would be a good idea to move on to the, uh, the vertical 2x12. So I'm just gonna load up both speakers here for that one. So a vertical 212, if I understand correctly, is that something which you guys mainly offer to players who want like quite a small footprint, but? Yeah, if you've got like a, like a lunchbox head or something, you might wanna consider that for um, the size it takes up on stage. And also the spread of sound you get with a speaker well, in this example, it's got an angle on the front, so you've got one speaker facing up towards you, which can be really helpful in a live sure. situation. But you also get with that, with the angle, um, different internal reflections. So um, whereas this has got a similar dimensions to the Fat Boy cab, this sounds quite different, as I think mm -hmm. we'll hear. So. Yeah, and I think we decided to work with that when we, d when we created this. We went for a slightly more vintage right. speaker choices, didn't we, yeah. to kind of... Because it's got like a slightly... Um, it's not quite as beefy sounding as the bigger cabs that we thought yeah. would be cool. So we've got here um, a regular greenback, a 25 watt greenback. And we've also got the only non-Celestial speaker. This is an Alnico hemp cone speaker. Mm -hmm. That's like the Carlos Santana, I think. Uses. Yeah. This is one of those, isn't he? Um, it's like a very syrupy sounding speaker. Well. Yeah, it's quite a specific sound, but it's definitely a cool one to, to have access to. Sure. So the default mic which comes up when you select this cab is the Neumann KM184, which is a, it's a small diaphragm condenser, which perhaps is not the most typical choice of microphones to use on, um, on a guitar cab. But I really like it because you get a little bit less of a presence bump than you'd get with something like a 57 or a 421. Uh, you also get more low end and more high end extension too. So I really like how it works with these kind of slightly more vintagey sounding speakers where uh, they tend to already be quite bright and it's just nice not to over exaggerate that and to bring out a bit more beef. So. Let's start just with the regular greenback and then I'll bring in the hemp cone so you guys can get a feel for what that sounds like. <laughs> The sound of that one i think it's a really neat sound it's, it's like very um it's just super syrupy and smooth isn't yeah. it um be good for that kind of like kind of classic rock stuff I really so. wouldn't it yeah i feel like this cab in general is kind of going in that, that direction and again that that, that uh, microphone choice i think works particularly mm. well cool let's move on from the vertical 212 and i think now is when we get to probably the best known of the cabs that zilla produces so that's the um the fat boy isn't it yeah the fat boy is definitely the most popular cab in our range um popularized by guys like you and uh um yeah it's a real versatile cab but it's really popular with the sort of metal guys so yeah sure. i guess i guess it's because like it's it's a 2 by 12 but i think a lot of people move from 412s down to the to the 212 size yeah don't want to lose the kind of beefy presentation right and the fat boy seems to do that really well eh? yeah so because this is quite like a versatile sounding cab, uh, we wanted to make sure it had speakers in there that could cover quite a wide range mm -hmm. of tones. And this particular pairing is something which, uh, this is actually my personal cab that we, we captured here. And I really like this set because you've got the Vintage 30, which is just a super recognizable sound. I mean, yeah. that's got to be the number one sold speaker in the world. Um, and it's, it works for so many different styles, but it's particularly good under high gain, I find. It's right, just okay. got that smoothness. Um, and then we're pairing it with the G12H Creamback, which, Gives you some of that classic character, but it's got a much higher wattage, so mm. it can take more power. And I think this is pretty much a configuration that you guys do most of the time. Very isn't popular, it? Yeah. yeah. And I, th I think again, down to you guys, like it's, uh... yeah. <laughs> it's cool. I mean, I love how it sounds, and we'll dig into it right now. You'll you'll hear it's uh, it's a really kind of uh, versatile combination of speakers. So let's let's show quite a few different tones here. I think let's start out with the amp, mm. um, maybe boost it with the pedal, and then we could actually see about moving to the plug-in world and getting a sound cool. which is a bit more high gain. So. Uh, first things first, let's hear the Vintage 30. Okay. 
so hard to beat a vintage 30 with a 57 right. isn't it like it just sounds so good uh, let's try out this high gain kind of plug-in sound so um we're going to use uh it's actually a plugin which i developed with neural dsp um it's got four different amps in it but we're going to focus on amp three which is like a super high gain rhythm sound and we're running this without the cabinet simulation into the zilla plugin as well so <laughs> pretty rocking yeah. you can definitely do you definitely do pretty much whatever you want with this and i really like the combination of those two speakers too when you when you actually combine them mm. i think i think it makes for like a really cool full range sound that's got aspects of modern and kind of traditional in it at the definitely, same time yeah. all right so that's the fat boy i think well i think the next logical step is the super fat boy so what's going on there what, what's the difference so it's um it's the same depth and width as a fat boy, but slightly taller, um, which gives you even more access to low end. And a standard that comes with a three piece back. So you, like the Studio Pro, we can take it off and get an open back. But I think this one's just got a solid closed back. Yeah, I think we went yeah. closed back. I think we, we basically decided to capitalize on the extra volume. This is the biggest of the two by 12s that, yeah. that you guys make, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so we went for something which is way more aimed at like modern mm. metal tones, kind of heavy rock. Um, we've got another V30 here, but this time it's a slightly older one. This is, um, this is a UK made vintage 30 and they actually tend to be a little bit brighter and a little bit more cutting. Mm. Um, these are the, the speakers that are responsible for a lot of that kind of um, late 90s, early 2000s metal yeah. tone, which I'm a huge fan of. So. We've got one of those speakers in there, and we've also got a G12 K100, which is a really high wattage speaker that that um, Celestin produced, and it's got a very kind of scooped industrial character. Yeah. On its own, uh, it's got like a really unique character that a lot of people like, but it also works really nicely blended underneath the core vintage 30 sound to get like a just a bigger overall effect. <laughs> I mean, this is really high gain world, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, something that's really cool about 2x12s too is that you get the low end, especially a big one like this, but it stays really tight. And I think that's something which a lot of people found, I've certainly found going from a 4x12 to the Fat Boy when I first mm. got one was like, it didn't feel like there was a, a lack of bass response, but it felt really focused and it kind of right. felt like the mids were really present too. And these tend to record really well. Uh, speaking of recording, we, we're using quite a lot of the room mic here because it feels awesome to play on. Um, would you agree to that, right? Like Absolutely, it, yeah. yeah. It just makes it... Uh, I, maybe if you're a guy who's not so used to sitting in front of monitors or whatever, it's like sitting in front of your amp. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Um, here, though, I, I think if you were going to be recording, you, you wouldn't want to use that. Or well, Typically, I don't use room mics when I'm recording heavy guitars, but uh, you've got the option right there, and, of course, you can choose it. But of course here you've got it right there on a fader, you could bring it in for certain sections or 
just make that decision after the fact uh, as to whether you actually want the room in there or not. I think it's worth pointing out at this point that we haven't actually made any changes to the settings on the amps. Um, all we've done is use a boost pedal on the JMP now and then and use like a high gain amp, but all of the changes which you're hearing are really coming from the different cabs that we're using. And that's making a point which I think is super important, that the cabinet is a major, major factor in the sonic presentation of your guitar tone, to the point that where I almost want to know what cab, uh, speaker, and microphone I'm using when I'm doing any kind of recording long before I even think about the amp, how we're gonna set it. Um, and that's why a, a product like this is so useful because you've got like this really quick way of trying out a whole load of different sonic presentations to figure out what's gonna work best for any given guitar part. Cool, so with the 2x12s out of the way, I think it's time to get stuck into the 4x12s. Now there's three of those, um, but let's start with the standard basket weave 4x12. So this is this is the smaller of the 4x12s? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's the same width and depth as the Fat Boy, so it's kind of related along those lines, but um, yeah, we're into 4x12 territory here. Cool. And given that it's relatively small, uh, we decided to go for a, a more kind of classic inspired set of speakers, didn't we? So. Mm. We've got the G12H Heritage, which is, is now a discontinued line, I think, isn't it? Yeah, recently, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a fantastic speaker. That. Yeah. And that's a really good example, I think, on that one as well. Yeah, yeah, I particularly like that one. Um, it's a UK-made kind of throwback to the vintage greenbacks. And then we've got a more modern interpretation of that classic uh, speaker sound, which is the creambacks. We've got the M creamback. Yeah. Um, and let's start with the Heritage speaker. I mean, I really think this speaker could do it all, even though it's supposed to be vintage-inspired. You can do high gain tones with it as well. Let's maybe focus on the on the amp, and uh, I'm going to start with the drive on actually, so you can hear cool. just how cool this speaker sounds across a whole wide range of styles. So. <laughs> This is a this is a surprise favorite I think from the session. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did for so many different styles, but I think as you just showed, like you can do practically anything with this set of speakers in yeah. this cab, can't you? I couldn't resist just kind of soloing the room for a while because it does just sound right. so great, doesn't it? So we recorded these at Middle Farm Studios, which is the same place that we've done a lot of our drum libraries. And while that room sounds amazing on drums, it just seems to lend itself super well to whatever you throw in there. And um, with guitars in there, it's got such a beautiful ambience that isn't harsh. It just seems to bring out the perfect reverb built in right there. Yeah, absolutely. Like absolutely, you can get so many cool tones with that. You could even think about certain effects you might want to create in your productions where you only use the room mic for like a kind right. of lo-fi sequence yeah, or yeah. something that's really in the background. So super cool having that there. It's stereo. Uh, if you use a mono instance of the plugin, you just get get mono. But again, it, you're not going to get any kind of phase cancellation. It's all designed to work really well. Cool, so moving on from the standard basket weave 412, let's check out the OS Straight 412, OS being oversized. Now, this is actually, I think, a custom sized cab. Uh, it's one of mine again. I think yeah. it's some kind of somewhere between, isn't it? I think, yeah, in between uh, regular oversized and standard standard, if that makes sense, but sure. yeah. Yeah, and this is a cab which I've had for quite a number of years and it's, it's always done me really well. Uh, when I got it, it had the most incredible pair of vintage 30s in it. Right. They're quite modern ones, but I don't know what it is about those specific ones. I've even chased down other speakers from the same batch, <laughs> and they don't sound like the two that originally came in that cab. 
Um, so it's really special to have a great representation of that cat. And this is one of the ones which I reach for above all of the others. So that's the one which is labeled Vintage 30. And then the V30 UK is another one of these older UK made V30s that perhaps sounds a little bit more cutting, a little bit more metal perhaps. Um, so two different flavors, both of them Vintage 30s, but both of them really usable across a range of styles. I think it'd be cool to show this one with the amp, but maybe let's show it with the, uh, the high gain plugin as well. Yeah. Especially for that V30 UK sound. I mean, that's real chunky, like modern metal kind of tone, isn't it? Like, you could use that for for any kind of heavy, high gain tones you could possibly want. Um, wicked, yeah, it's absolutely one of my favorite ones in this uh, in this set. Let's try out the last 412. So this is it, this is the last one in the pack. Um, this is the angled oversized cab, which is a custom cab, I think, specifically for this session, yeah, wasn't yeah. it, yeah. So this is a particularly big cab, mm. really thick construction, wasn't it? And um, here we've gone for the same combination of speakers that we used in the Super Fat Boy. Right. So this is like a kind of ultra metal setup of the UK made Vintage 30 and the GTOL K100 for those kind of more industrial sounds. And um, I think it's worth starting with uh, with the 57s because that's just the, that would be where most people would start for this yeah. kind of thing. I'm going to keep no room in the beginning just so it sounds really sure. tight and focused. And we'll use the plug-in again here. So, so uh, yeah, take it away. <laughs> Wicked. So, I mean, that's very much the bread and butter with this cab. It's kind of aimed at brutality. And you can probably hear it's got that really guttural character to it. Like, it feels a bit more scooped out than some of the other ones in the in the range. And uh, the G12 K100, I don't love it in solo in general, that speaker. But as an additional speaker next to a V30, I think it just works so well. So, I mean, that's a, a really broad walkthrough of the different cabs which we've got here in the plug-in. There are so many potential combinations here. While you don't have infinite control over the microphone positions, you know you're always going to be in a good place with the microphone positions that we are giving you. And then between the, the seven different microphones, including the room, I mean, that plus the ability to combine up to seven of those at a time, plus loading in your own custom impulses too if you wanted to, it is insane how many different tones you could get out of this plugin. And I think it's just a, it's a really cool workflow for generating new and exciting guitar tones. Even if you're not using like real amps into a load box like we've been doing a lot of the time here, whether, whether using plugins or hardware digital solutions, being able to change the cab sound can so completely transform the guitar sounds you're getting that it's super cool to have a plugin which is as easy as this and as varied too. And as an extra bonus too, if you're using digital devices, by using this export function down here, you can create your own cab blends and export them as a WAV file that you can load on to other hardware devices as well. So uh, it doesn't just stop here with the plugin. So that's about it. So huge thanks to Joe for being our model today. Very welcome. Uh, huge thanks to Paul and Zilla as a company for collaborating with us to create this amazing sounding plugin. Thank you for watching too. I really hope that you've been inspired by what you've heard here today and look forward to hearing the kinds of tones which you come out with. Also keep an eye out on this channel because we're constantly uploading new little bits of tutorial content whether they're just really short little ideas or quite long form ones like this. Well, thank you so much for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.